All right, welcome to our Sound for Video session. It is the 5th of July, 2016. And in this session, we're going to talk about time code and syncing your audio to your video. So I have a few notes here. I'm just going to refer to those. Um, let me let me just sort of preface this with a couple of things. There are um, some things to consider. And first of all, the, kind of the big question is, is, why don't you just record audio to your to your camera? And the answer is, is that yeah, you can do that. And there are cases when it's legitimate to do that, despite <laughs> everything we've talked about in the course. Um, let me just kind of run through that. First of all, I think just to kind of catch everyone up to the to speed and get all of us on the same page is, and this is all my perspective here. And I think a lot of, of people that are serious about audio think about these things in the same way or similar ways. Um, but first of all, DSLR microphone, microphones built into the DSLR cameras or mirrorless cameras generally sound pretty awful. And that's generally because they're so far from the person that's doing the speaking if you are recording a piece with speaking. Um, and then also their microphone inputs range from really, really bad to mediocre. Most of those kind of consumer prosumer level cameras don't have great microphones and not they don't have great microphone inputs. It's just it's just a reality. I'm not trying to be critical of them. It's just what I've found. Some of the new mirrorless cameras, they're about the same, maybe slightly better in some cases. My Panasonic GH4, actually, its microphone input um, definitely sounds tinnier than a proper audio recorder. And I'm and I'm just talking about little things, even a Zoom H1, which is a nowadays, I think that's about an $80 recorder, um, sounds a lot better and also has a much cleaner um, performance in terms of self noise of the microphone input. So it's just a reality. And that's generally why I will choose to record my audio separately to a proper audio recorder. Now, here's some interesting things to cinema cameras. These are the higher end cameras that are used to produce films and movies. Um, and here I'm talking about things like Area Alexa and the RED cameras, and um, there are a whole bunch of them out there. Some of them don't even have audio inputs. Um, <laughs> they really only have time code inputs. And those which do have mic inputs are generally used for reference audio. Um, that is to say, it'll capture audio, but it's only used for you know, maybe for dailies, although that's, um, let me explain that in a little bit more detail, or for syncing audio. Um, often what happens is that the, on a production where there is a cinema camera in use, typically there's also going to be a field mixer, a person recording the sound independently. And what that person will do is send a, a stereo mix from their recording gear to the camera, and that'll be recorded with the camera. So rather than have the camera actually capture, you know, some microphone connected to the camera, microphones will all be connected to the sound guy's uh, devices, and then a stereo mix will be sent to the camera. So that's pretty common on those in those types of cases. There are also, of course, ENG or documentary style cameras, kind of professional camcorders and things of that nature. And many of these actually do have pretty good microphone inputs. Um, for example, when my friend Scott Vanderbilt came to NAB, we shot all those pieces that we did on the show floor there with his Sony FS5. And I was really impressed with the quality of the audio that was able to pick up. So um, there are some cameras where the microphone inputs are pretty good. They have XLR inputs. Um, they, um, they have just high quality inputs and, and they're great. And so there are some cases where that's totally usable and um, you know, when you're fil filming a documentary or uh, doing ENG type work, um, having kind of a post audio sync workflow isn't going to work anyway, certainly not for ENG. And so I think those cameras, they've put a little bit more effort into making high quality audio inputs. So that's definitely something to consider there. All right. So. Obviously, you know, as I mentioned, if you've got a short turnaround time, your workflow has to take into account being able to record to the camera. Um, but again, if you're or, or if you're just if you need to refine your workflow, you may just have to record to camera. And that's just a reality. And that's fine. But um, if if you are going to work a dual sound system workflow, that is you record the picture with the camera and you record the audio with an audio recorder separately, you're going to have to sync in some way. And there are two main ways that you can go about doing that. 
The first is kind of a more traditional clapperboard or um, clapping type of workflow where essentially you have a visual and audio reference in both the picture and in the sound. So on the camera, um, and what you'll see on the camera is there'll be a clapperboard or somebody just clapping in, in frame in front of their face. And then that also, of course, makes a sound. And then in post, you can match the two of those up. And if you are not familiar with the kind of the intricate details on how to do that, I have a couple of videos I'll link to below showing you how to do that, both in Premiere Pro and in Final Cut Pro 10. So get some, some idea on how to do that there. It's very simple, actually. It sounds complicated, but it's actually much simpler and I think much more straightforward. And once you get a little practice, I don't think it's I don't think it's a problem at all. Some people still do everything they can to avoid it. And I, I totally respect and understand that. But don't be scared away by it if you haven't done it before. The second way they do that is using time code. And so let me um, let me talk a little bit about that. Now, first of all, I don't want to scare anyone away here. You may not use time code for your personal projects or small budget projects. That's just the way it is. It's it's a it can be a very expensive thing to do. Um, but here, let me give you some background on why I'm even talking about this. So that's that's totally fine. Your personal projects, I up until this point haven't used time code at all. So doing proper time code can be rather expensive. You have to have the right gear to do it. Um, but the reason I'm talking about here is that you may find that someday you're the sound guy on a production and that production is going to require time code. So I'm really just kind of hoping to, to kind of give you an explanation of in general, a very high level how it works so that you have that understanding because the more understanding you have, the better the sound person you'll be. So I'm not here to convince you you need to do time code. <laughs> so please don't take it that way. Um, let's see here. Again, the the more traditional approach of uh, using a clapper board, and actually I don't even have a proper clapper board or a slate as they're sometimes called. Um, I just have a little toy one that my daughter got for me, but <laughs> um, I, I don't use that. I, I almost always just use claps. So I will do three claps in front of the talent before I get started. And usually that's just enough to, so that Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 10 can automatically sync that up. I just choose the audio clip, choose the video clip, tell it to sync it based on the audio and we're all set to go. So. Um, that works very seamlessly and very quickly. So there is that. Now, if you're working on a, in a production where um, they require time code, there's there are some reasons for that. Why do they not just use the, you know, the old clap? In some cases, they do. Um, a few. Usually, those are going to be smaller budget and um, short film types of things. But when you get to a larger production where the piece is longer, um, they're not going to want to spend all that time in post trying to do that or you know trying to find claps or how far into the clip the clap was because you know the assistant director called you know roll sound and roll camera and and it was a little while before the clapper board was actually done so it just saves some time if you can use time code so here's the idea with time code your audio recorder and your camera will each have a fairly high precision clock which writes the exact same reference time to the audio file and to the camera file at the same actual time. And then in post, you simply tell the editing app to sync the audio and video together using that time code information. So that's a gross oversimplification of how it all works. And there are a lot of ins and outs, um, but that's generally how it works. So what that means in practical terms is that the camera and the audio recorder need to record the exact same reference time at the same actual time. So, <laughs> um, and so that's that's kind of the first step. So you have you have to have some way to sync those two, your audio recorder and your camera. And you can do that a variety of different ways depending on the setup that you have. So for, for example, you can do this with a hard cable connection between the two. So assuming that one of them has a time code generator and the other has a time code input, um, an example of that is that, um, I gave this actually quite a little while ago, the Panasonic GH4 and the Tascam DR701D, so the Panasonic GH4 camera has an HDMI output. You can connect that to your Tascam DR701D via HDMI cable, and they'll actually communicate time code between the HDMI cable. So that's a, that's a fine workflow. That works pretty nicely, I found. Um, that's more of a consumer-grade um, time code workflow. Typically, 
um, I have found you don't usually use a hard cable connection between the recorder and the camera for an entire shoot. Um, and let me explain that. So if you if you don't really have that situation, uh, what you can do is you can actually use a time code generator that's independent of the camera and or the audio recorder. So for example, I have my sound devices 633. That has a proper time code generator clock built into it. It has a time code output cable on it. And um, then you can connect that to your camera to sync the camera to the audio recorder. So they'll have the exact same time in their clocks. Um, many of the cameras that, that uh, I'm, I suspect that many of you are working with don't have time code generators in them and don't have time code inputs on them. So what can you do? Well, you can use a device like this. I'll just show this here. This is the Mose Gear TIG Q28. This is actually a time code generator. You can see here it has a, uh, let's see, a Limo connector here, two 3.5 millimeter outputs. A couple of settings here. You have some of these little dials. And then on the bottom, just a battery pack. So um, that's a pretty cool little device. Um, what this does is I can actually connect this via Limo connector to my sound devices 633 and tell them to jam sync. So the clock in the sound devices 633 feeds a signal to this so that the two of them are synced perfectly uh, based on time and frame number. Then I can disconnect this from the 633 and attach this via 3.5 millimeter cable. Here's the output from the TIG. And then I just connect this to the microphone input on my Nikon D750 or Panasonic GH4. And what that does is this actually records an audio signal that is time code to the microphone input of the camera. Let me just show you what that looks like so that you're at that point, your um, camera audio is actually recording a signal, a time code signal. And let me just show you. We'll share our screen here. Okay. Here we go. This is Adobe Audition. This is a. Um, this was actually recorded on my Nikon D750. And this is what the time code signal looks like. I'm not going to play it because it will potentially hurt your ears. <laughs> um, but this is the idea. It actually records uh, an electronic type of signal to the microphone input. And this is all, actually all information that can be interpreted um, by your actual video editing app as time code. Now, this has a lot more ins and outs than that. I'm going to just go ahead and stop sharing that for now. We'll come back to that potentially. All right. Okay, so that's kind of the main idea there. So you're actually recording time code to the actual camera's audio input with a device like this. Then in post, you have to um, do a couple things. Now, that's one way it works on these more consumer grade cameras like most of us are using. Um, this can also send time code to a time code input. And you would do that either 3.5 3 millimeter or using the, again, the Limo connector. And um, in that case, if you're recording directly to a time code input, that time code signal, rather than being recorded to an audio track, is actually recorded to a metadata track. And that's actually what Final Cut Pro 10 or Premiere Pro is expecting if you're going to sync using time code. Let me just show you what that looks like when you do sync using time code. We'll do it in Premiere here this morning. And sharing. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, this is very similar to how you would sync, um, even if you were just using the regular audio track sync, like, like with a clapper board. Um, but I would just se select the audio track, the video track, right click. We're gonna choose merge clips. The difference is, is that instead of using audio here, like you typically with a, with a clapper board, you're gonna choose time code and then click OK. And if you did that, in this case, I don't have a, this is, this was actually not going to work in this case because this is actually using the audio track um, on the camera clip. 
Um, but that's all you would do. You'd click OK, and they would be synced, and you'd be ready to start editing that. So that's a really, really straightforward workflow and, and actually one that works really, really nicely. That's the beauty of time code is that you're not futzing around trying to figure out, OK, you know, where was the clap in this? You know, can I can I cut off some of the header of this clip? Where is it? You know, so on and so forth. Or if for some reason, Premiere or Final Cut can't seem to sync the two of them. They're usually pretty good at that, but sometimes they miss. Uh, with time code, as long as you're recording good time code and the, the camera and the audio recorder are in sync, um, the syncing process is super, super simple. So that's uh, that's kind of the beauty. Now, things get a little more complicated. Again, when you're using a camera like a, a consumer grade camera where you are feeding the time code in as an audio track, you then in post first have to convert that audio track and have a, some sort of app that can either interpret that as linear time code, which is what it is. It's called linear time code, um, which is a type of SMPTE time timecode. Um, you have to have that converted somehow uh, or somehow have an app that, that recognizes that as time code as opposed to just plain old audio. Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro don't do that. There are only a few apps that do, and that's that's why I think it's worth mentioning, and this is where things get a little more complicated. So. One app that does that, of course, is um, Avid Media Composer, which again is the video editing app that's used primarily on larger budget projects, both for sorry for film, for television, for uh, broadcast. That's usually what's used, and it actually does have a little um, function built into it where you can convert audio linear time code to um, proper SMPT time code on a metadata track where your editor will then recognize it and be able to use it to sync the audio to the video. So that's one app. There's another one. Um, one thing that we covered in our NAB coverage was we went to a, a company called Tentacle Sync. Um, they actually have an app that comes with their solution so that you get a hardware um, time code generator. Plus you also get a, a software application that comes with it that will actually will recognize the audio track on all your video clips as time code and then sync them up for you. And um, if you haven't seen that, I encourage you to go take a look at that if you're interested. Um, it's amazing how quickly, um, what you do is you just drop all of your video clips into a folder or into the, the app, all of your audio clips in, and it syncs them all up in a matter of about a second. Um, and I mean, that could be, you know, tens of clips. Um, and once you get to hundreds of clips, then you can do that as well. So um, that is that is amazing how quickly that works and how simple it is when you do that. And then you export a an XML file, you bring that into your video editing clip and everything is all synced up and it's a, it's a beautiful workflow. And it helps you, you know, you have a lot more time to focus on the edit instead of futzing around trying to get all your audio synced up to your video. So that's a that's a really, really nice workflow. And then the third app that I'm aware of to do something like this is an app called LTC convert. And uh, let me just show you. Let's see if we can pull this up here. LTC convert. And here it is. Let me just share my screen again. Um, here it is. Yeah. So just a, I don't know who this. Who runs Video Toolshed? Site called Video Toolshed. They have a variety of different um, little apps for video producers. This is called LTC Convert. This again, it takes, or, or sometimes it's called auxiliary timecode or aux timecode um, when you record the timecode as audio with your video clips. And this runs about $249 US, so it's not cheap. Actually, none of these methods are cheap, and timecode generally is not cheap if you're looking at it from a you know, a no budget is kind of self-funded point of view. Um, but this is another app that can do that. You just load the files in here, tell it essentially to convert that audio track to time code. Um, it saves all the files and then you're ready to go ahead and bring it into your video editing app. And then you sync them up using time code. So this is not as kind of streamlined as the, as the workflow from Tentacle Sync, um, but it works as well. So there is another option there. Um, in my personal case, I think this uh, tentacle sync solution, I think, is probably the most elegant in terms of being able to, to use time code. The, in relative terms, um, 
it's one of the more affordable ways to do time code. Yeah, it costs, you know, I think $375 if you buy just a single time code generator from them, and that comes with the software um, for Windows, or sorry, for Mac. For Windows, it also comes with an app, but all that app does is very similar to LTC Convert. It just takes the audio time code and, and essentially re writes the file, the video file, so that that time code is then on the metadata track, the time code track. Um, so that one's not quite as slick as the Mac version, and uh, and it doesn't do all of the, it doesn't automatically sync everything up for you. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, all right, let me refer back to my notes here, see where we're at, make sure I'm covering all the things I'd hope to cover. Oh yeah, one thing too, obviously accuracy of the time code generators is very important. Um, this one, for example, in most of the tests that I've seen, and I just got it last week, so I haven't done extensive tests with it yet, but most of the tests I've seen, um, this can hold a solid, accurate signal, you know, keep the time perfectly in sync for about eight hours, which is generally gonna get you through most productions. And again, if a lot of times the kind of the workflow of a professional sound mixer will be to do the jam sync at the start of the set or start of the shooting and then do it again after the meal. So if you have a lunch, for example, or a dinner, and then you begin shooting again, um, usually they'll re, re jam sync and that this will hold that signal easily well enough that that long. Um, the Tentacle Sync says that I think in 24 hours it should be within one one frame. So the video frame shouldn't be off by more than one frame within 24 hours. So that's pretty impressive. We'll see. I, I've actually ordered one. Um, we'll see when I get it and start working with it, how well that works. So the reason I'm investing again, I'd mentioned before, I'm looking at doing more uh, professional sound gigs or jobs as the sound guy. So um, in my case, it kind of makes sense to do that investment. All right. Uh, let's see. It's incidentally, just, just so you're aware, most cinema cameras and most higher end um, ENG cameras will have a time code input. So you won't have to do this funky workflow where you record it to the audio track and then do that conversion after in post. Um, it'll already be recorded on the time code track. And literally all you have to do is bring it into your video editing app, you know, sync up the sync the video to the audio by just choosing the two files, merge, time code, boom, done. So um that's the nice thing about those higher-end cameras that you don't get on the consumer grade cameras generally all right so that i think that kind of covers the main things that i wanted to cover in regards to time code just again so that you have a very good basic high level understanding of how time code works and you know why it's why it's useful um but there were a couple of questions as well. Let me go ahead and get over to the Google Plus page here and let's address those as well. Just a second to get there. Um, one of the questions actually had to do not so much with time code, but with something else. And let's just look here. I think it was, yes, Team 630 um, asked a question. I'm doing an audio on a project and I got to record audio of two people talking in the car, how would you attack this through recording with a Blackmagic camera? I have a Taz cam. Well, I'm not sure that those two have, I mean, you can do that with any camera, any audio recorder combination. What I would do is, um, and, and most of the location sound mixers that I've talked to or listened to about this subject, Typically, they'll use either a plant mic or lavalier mics on each of the talents. So I assume, for example, you'll be shooting maybe, you know, most common thing is to shoot through the windshield of the car um, or have someone in the back seat operating camera shooting up towards the driver and the passenger from behind. Um, typically, what I'll do is they'll either use a plant mic or they will lav up the, the talent or both. Um, so laving, one thing you want to consider when you're doing the lavalier um, setup is that if you, you know, the passengers will most likely be wearing seat belts, so, and the driver. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to mount the lavalier hidden underneath their clothing, if that's where you're going to hide it. Um, and you'll want to put it on the side opposite where the seat belt strap will be. 
So for example, if I'm the driver in the United States, I know this is different if you're in Australia or in the UK um, or, us, or Ireland or wherever, um, I will put it on the side. So if I'm the driver, it's gonna be on this side and the seatbelt strap will come across this way. So it'll miss, if I've got the lavalier on this side, the seatbelt strap's gonna come across this side. You don't want that rubbing against the microphone, obviously. So just be kind of careful about where you place the microphone so that it doesn't get a lot of rubbing on it. Um, and then we do have a previous episode where we talked about hiding lavalier microphones. I would definitely encourage you to take a look at that. I might also do plant mics. Plant mics actually are nice because they don't get all of that um, the clothing rustle although they can pick up more vibration from the car, so it's kind of a trade-off. But plant mics, you can often run the cable up, put it on the visor above the driver and the passenger, if those are the only two that you're recording. Um, or you can plant them, you know, for passengers in the back seat, you can plant them on the back of the headrests of the, the driver and the passenger seats. There are lots of different ways you can approach that. So that's uh those are that's kind of the general approach that i would use and then of course i just use a regular dual seeing sound system sync process so you know we do a clap of some sort at the start of the scene and um at the or start of the take and then um, just sync that up in post so i would record all the audio to your task task cam do all the shooting with your black magic camera and then sync it up in post just like that so Hopefully that helps. And again, I'll have those two videos below in the links for um, syncing and post that we've do done before for Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro 10. All right, um, that was the question that we had for today. So that there was our topic. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope that um, um, even if you, again, if you're not going to do a, um, a process where you are using time code, at least hopefully you have a, you know, kind of a decent understanding of it at this point that will, you know, at least arm you with that information so that if you do find yourself in some at some point on a production where they are using time code, you generally understand what they're talking about. Um, terms like jam sync, which is syncing up the clocks in an, maybe an audio recorder, time code generator, camera, um, that's, that's what jam sync means. Um, terms like time code generator, now you know what that means. Um, <laughs> Uh, sometimes called a TX, is it TXCO? Uh, TCXO? Anyway, time code generator, that, that refers to a time code clock of some sort, um, which again is a high precision clock that should work well in all different weather conditions at different temperatures, um, which is important when you're out shooting in, you know, really cold temperatures, for example, or really hot temperatures. So... Hopefully that was helpful for you. Thanks for coming to the session today. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. We'd love to um, kind of kick up the conversation with you on the topic. So thanks again. We'll talk to you all again next week. Take care.